can tell you right off the bat that this interview made a lot of audiologists really upset. Hey guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD YouTube channel. And in this video, I wanna do a reaction to an audio interview done on NPR by Aisha Roscoe, where she interviewed Dr. Frank Lynn of the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Now, if you do not know who Dr. Frank Lynn is, he basically published an article back in 2011 that showed this link between hearing loss and dementia. And it indicated that individuals with a mild untreated hearing loss are two times more likely to develop dementia later in life if you have a moderate untreated hearing loss, it's three times more likely. And if you have a severe untreated hearing loss, you are five times more likely to develop dementia later in life. So this particular interview, they're talking about this link between hearing loss and dementia, and potentially if over-the-counter hearing aids could help. Now I will say that there were a lot of audiologists who were pretty pissed off about this interview, and I'll get into that here in a little bit, but let's go ahead and take a listen to it, and I'll let you know what I think. Over-the-counter hearing aids, no prescription necessary, could be at a store near you this fall. That's because the Food and Drug Administration decided last week to create a category of OTC devices for adults with mild to moderate hearing loss. It's expected to drive down the cost, good news for millions of Americans who need the devices but can't afford them. And it's not just the ability to hear that's important. Dr. Frank Lynn has been researching the effects and risk of hearing loss for years. He's the director of the Cochlear Center for Hearing and Public Health at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore, and he joins us now. Welcome. Thank you so much, Aisha. So first, do you have any idea how many Americans with hearing loss actually have hearing aids? It's roughly about 15 to 20 percent of uh, Americans with hearing loss actually report using a hearing aid. It's phenomenally low, and it really hasn't changed in many, many years. So I'll stop it right there. I don't know where these really low percentages are coming from. It hasn't been 15 to 20 percent for a decade or more, potentially decades. Uh, some of the more recent data that we have shows around 34 percent hearing aid adoption rates inside of the United States. And if this does anything, it just normalizes the behavior of not treating hearing loss. I don't think that individuals are, uh, like Dr. Frank Lynn, are understanding the potential negative effect that quoting these really low statistics from years ago is. Medicare doesn't cover the cost, which can average about $4,700 for a pair of hearing aids. And most insurance plans don't cover it either. I would think that that would be a barrier for some people, that amount of money. $4,700, to put that in perspective, for the average American, that could be your third largest material purchase in life after a house and a car. But I'll say in the same breath, though, it's not only cost. It's just an act. I'll stop it there really quick here, too, to say that hearing aids are typically not going to be the third most expensive purchase that you have in your life. First of all, that is an average of $4,700. If you're someone who cannot afford that, there are substantially lower cost options for hearing treatment that can do a really good job of treating your hearing loss, and you get professional care along with that. I mean, uh, I had an air conditioner break and it cost me more than $4,700 to replace the air conditioner. So there's a lot of different expenses. Uh, my cell phone plan cost me more than that uh, over the course, uh, if you were to take the, the cost of a cell phone and a cell phone plan over the cost of, or the course of five to seven years and compare that to the cost of hearing aids, you'll pay significantly more for your cell phone and the plan associated with it than you will on hearing treatment. So I don't necessarily agree that it is the third most expensive purchase that you will have in your life. The only way to get a hearing aid per se now is to make multiple trips to see an audiologist or an ENT like me and, you know, multiple trips thereafter to get fit and adjusted. And then beyond that, there's issues where people don't think hearing is important. think it's just a, you know, it's a usual process of aging and hence it's consequential. And there are issues with obviously just the technology themselves. Why, if you spend so much money on a hearing aid, why doesn't it work seamlessly with my, let's say my phone and my computer and my, and my TV, for instance. But without a doubt, cost is and access are probably the biggest issues. I do agree that cost and access are issues for hearing aid adoption. But when you look at other countries that give their citizens free hearing aids, literally free, their hearing aid adoption rates are only about 10% higher at the most over the United States. So we know that accessibility and affordability are not the major reasons why people are not pursuing hearing treatment. So you and your colleagues have studied other health risks associated with hearing loss. What has your research found? About a decade ago, we began a series of research studies 
And we increasingly found that hearing loss um, was strongly linked with your risk of dementia. And to this day now, mm. based on all the studies over the last 10 years, showing that hearing loss is arguably the single largest potentially treatable or potentially modifiable risk factor for dementia. Dr. Lin is right on with that. So we had these studies come out here just in the past few years that it had shown that that hearing loss, untreated hearing loss in midlife was the leading potentially modifiable risk factor for dementia later in life. And these research studies are starting to come out like crazy. And, and a few years ago, we were basically called fear mongers for suggesting the idea that if you did not treat your hearing loss that you with hearing aids, that you were going to get dementia. Now, we still do not know if you're going to get dementia if you don't treat your hearing loss, but it is a risk factor. And as of right now, even before this research is fully developed to show causal relationship here, it is still a very good idea to treat your hearing loss uh, in any way, shape, or form that you can. Do we have any sense of why that might be the case? Because some people may be listening and be like, well, what does hearing have to do with dementia? <laughs> You know, you're absolutely right. I mean, like, you know, hearing loss affects like the inner ear, your cochlea, and dementia is about your brain. How it could it be related? But it comes down to probably arguably three major mechanisms. So the first mechanism is basically that hearing loss likely imposes a load on the brain. And what I mean by that is when you can't hear well, when you have had some aging of your inner ear, it basically means your brain's constantly getting a much more garbled sound from your ear. And in turn, what the brain has to do to constantly decode that sound is the brain has to sort of throw more brain power at it. And when the brain has to do that, those brain resources may come at the expense of other systems like our thinking and memory abilities. The second idea is related, but actually is very different. And it's the idea that hearing loss actually does directly affect the brain's structural integrity. Parts of the brain that are used to receiving sound begin to atrophy faster. And we actually see this now, not only in animal studies, but in human studies. And finally, the third idea, um, and again, the thing I need to emphasize is these ideas aren't mutually exclusive, not that one's right, other ones are wrong. It's likely a combination of all three. The last one's the most intuitive, and it's the idea that, you know, for some people, if you can't hear very well, you might be um, more isolated and hence lonely. And in turn, uh, for many, many years now, we've understood that social isolation and loneliness likely directly affects our risk of cognitive client dementia, mainly through loss of cognitively stimulating activities, but also just a loss of engagement with the world around us as we become sort of more pigeonholed at home sometimes. So I think all of that was very well said by Dr. Frank Lynn. There are a variety of different reasons why untreated hearing loss could potentially lead to this in increased risk of cognitive decline and ultimately dementia later in life. And if this is the first time that you're hearing about this, I have a variety of videos on my YouTube channel. I'll link them down in the description that you can check out. Just had a, a fantastic interview on the Dr. Cliff Show just this past week here. Um, where we talked for about an hour about this link between hearing loss and dementia and all the potential reasons why uh, those two are so tightly linked. Will the over-the-counter devices, will they be good enough to actually address Americans' like hearing loss issues? Absolutely. And I've been working on um, the over-the-counter hearing aid legislation and regulations literally for eight years. And the regulations, fortunately, are such that they can benefit people with up to a moderate hearing loss, which basically means among American adults with hearing loss, fully about 90% of people, if not a bit more, could be served by OTC hearing aids in terms of the sound output levels, which just makes it incredibly exciting because all of a sudden, in one fell swoop, you're going to see innovation, you're going to see competition, you're going to see increased access, and you're going to see lower costs. So it's a really a win-win-win all around. I don't know if I necessarily agree with 90% of people, if not a bit more, could be served by over-the-counter hearing aids in terms of sound output levels. Um, I've tested pretty much every over-the-counter hearing aid that's out there at this point, and even before over-the-counter hearing aids, we had direct-to-consumer hearing aids. I've tested a ton of those, and I've had trouble fitting even mild level hearing losses up to prescriptive targets for an individual's hearing loss with these devices. Um, I think that there probably is research showing that it's better than nothing, which is great. Um, I think that this is probably what got most audiologists upset is this 90% of people. I think that that could be very misleading. Um, I of individuals who come into my clinic, at least, there is no way that these over-the-counter hearing aids are going to serve the majority of the patients who come into my clinic. So maybe he's talking specifically of 90% of individuals with a mild to moderate hearing loss. Um, and that might just have been lost in translation here. 
Are there any concerns about buying hearing aids at the store, the way someone might get some reading glasses? Is there any risk to this? Yes. And you're talking to a surgeon here. So everything from a a surgeon's point of view is, you know, benefit versus risk. So are there risks, you know, risks of someone under amplifying their hearing loss or over amplifying their hearing loss or maybe missing like some type of weird hearing condition? Yes, that's always theoretically a risk. The question is, is it outweighed several orders of magnitude by the benefits? (laughs) And, you know, I think the best line about all of this comes from uh, Stephanie Sujewski, who's my friend and colleague. She said, you know, the only way an over-the-counter hearing aid is going to kill you is if you swallow it. And I think it's absolutely true. It's just a hearing aid. It's not going to kill you. So that's kind of weird. Uh, I agree with half of what he said. The other half, I'm like, yeah. Um, but I do agree that you're weighing risk versus reward. We know that some people are going to be negatively impacted by attempting to use an over-the-counter hearing aid. They're gonna go undiagnosed for a serious medical condition like a brain tumor, and then they will potentially die from that brain tumor. Um, But what he's talking about here is that it is definitely more beneficial to have access to some kind of hearing treatment than to not have access at all. Uh, So the pros definitely outweigh the cons here, but I feel like he's being a little bit, I don't know, irresponsible with how he's saying it. You know, this idea that, you know, an over-the-counter hearing aid, the only way it's going to kill you is if you swallow it. Like, I don't really, that's just kind of coming out of left field. I don't see how that really pertains to what we're talking about here. There is the potential for harm with over-the-counter hearing aids. If people attempt to use over-the-counter hearing aids, it's not appropriate for them. And they say, see, told you, can't use a hearing aid. And then they end up, let's say that this link between hearing loss and dementia is like, is causal. And later on down the road, they develop dementia, Alzheimer's, and they die because of it. Like, it could potentially kill you. Um, Now, I know I'm being extreme here, but I just... I don't know. I I take this stuff very seriously and we have to be careful about how we're saying things when we're being interviewed by the media. And I get how difficult this can be. And I think that this interview so far has been really good. I think Dr. Franklin is he's bringing up a lot of really good points. You can tell that he knows what he's talking about. Um, I have a, a couple of concerns with the statistics that he had, but otherwise, I think this is a very good interview. That's Dr. Frank Glenn, director of the Cochlear Center for Hearing and Public Health at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Thank you for talking with us today. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Aisha. Honestly, I'm not really sure what audiologists were so bent out of shape about with this particular interview. I always think that more information out there is a good thing. Of course, there were a couple of pieces that I critiqued in there, not major critiques, honestly. I th- uh, like I said, I felt like it was a really sol- solid interview. I think that some of the statistics we need to all come into agreement on, and, and maybe we're looking at different sources, which is how we're coming up with different pieces of information. Um, ultimately, I do think that over the counter hearing aids are going to have a significantly positive impact if people decide to go that route. I'm not quite convinced yet that we're going to have such a massive adoption of over-the-counter hearing aids, though, at this point. I guess time will ultimately tell with that. Well, if you guys liked this review of this audio clip from NPR, go ahead and give me a thumbs up on this video. It really helps out the channel. If you are not yet subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that as well and hit that notification bell so you get notified every single time I post a new video. And As always, I will see you next time.